When it comes to protein, Kai chooses carnivore. Experience for yourself the muscle building power of beef at the speed of whey. Carnivore, the world's number one selling beef protein. The winner of the Train with Kai contest, Tarin Davis, understands hard work and rigid discipline. Tarin trained as a martial artist from a young age and holds four black belts, as well as being an eight-time fighting and weapons kata world champion. In order to further his new dream of pursuing bodybuilding, he entered the Train with Kai contest and won. He finds himself today at Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym in New York, training with the two-time Arnold Classic champion and possible future Mr. Olympia. In the previous video, Kai put Tarin through an extensive warm-up for mind and body that would have been a complete workout for most people. Now he moves on to the heavier muscle building part of the training, keeping in mind of course that Tarin is only two weeks away from his next contest. He's somewhat depleted from dieting, so Kai gives him a break by allowing him to use lighter weights. But even this close to a show, it is still important to maintain intensity and form. Now, I see when you're doing this movement, and I realize I don't want to do you a disservice. Now, normally, at this point for me, and even her, what we end up doing is going heavier and, and getting, for the most part, maybe 90% 90, 90 of the, move, the range of motion, yeah. all right? Believing that that's enough to contract our back as we go progressively heavier. But, you're two weeks out from stepping on stage. So I think if I were to encourage you to do that, I'd be doing you a disservice. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd like to get you to do is to not go heavier, mm -hmm. but maybe even go lighter a little bit. Yeah. And I'd like to see you com complete the full range of motion. I want to see you bring this bar from the top down to your chest. Mm -hmm. I want to see the bar touch your chest. And I'm more importantly, want to see these muscles to the rear activate as a result of the bar touching your chest. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I want to see your muscles go from contraction, 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 to complete contraction. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can't get it any further back. So let's lighten that bar a little bit. And let's control this. Nine, let's go. Come on. Ten, let's go. Come on. Eleven, let's go. All this. Let's go. Twelve. Come on. 13, come on, 14, come on, 15, see there's even a swing on her, there's a swing on me, you about to get on stage though, so if we get, we get you to get two sets, you know, with a little more swing than what you see her doing, mm -hmm. and then you do two sets with the control that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. Like for instance, imagine you're on stage. When you're on stage, when you're on stage, you and I, quarter turn to the right. Stand with me, we're on the line. We're on the line together, right? When you stand in a semi-relaxed pose from the rear, right? They ask for a rear to a bicep shot. What does a bodybuilder do? What will you do? Rear to a bicep shot. Uh, four. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is what I learned. And I'm gonna show you why I think about it this way and how it applies to me here and why I would even bring this up right now. Everything starts, we said, from the floor up. So, some relax pose from the rear, quarter turn to the right, we stand up and they ask for a rid of a bicep shot. I'm gonna take a minute, place my feet, put foot back, spike the calf, hamstring, come up, glute, up through my spinal erectus, my lats, my rear delts. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach up to the ceiling, reach up, as I reach up, I turn my spine. Curl it back, still flexion of my calf, hamstring, and glute. Reach. Now I connect with my traps, my rhomboids, and my rear delts. Pull down. Traps and rear delts. This. Um, as I hold it, I squeeze and create an isometric contraction. And then hold it throughout my entire body. 
when we do this movement, this pull down, you want to approach this almost now, not like you want to move a whole lot of weight. Don't even worry about the weight now. Now you become light, your hands become hooks. And what you do is you connect with your traps, squeeze your traps, squeeze your rear delts, squeeze your traps, squeeze your lats. Pull that bar down, take your, your elbows, rotate them back just a bit. That's your rear delts contracting in order to make that happen. That's contraction on your traps in order to make that happen. You don't just let it go, but you release slowly. It's still a contraction on that whole thing. Your whole back and body should come alive. Now, again, pull, pull, squeeze. I'm not trying to pull weight as much as in the moment. I'm trying to contract those muscles. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So I want to see you do a set like that. Oh yeah, we're doing it to the front. So the same rules still apply. Same rules still apply, leaning back. Rear delts. Now it becomes a little bit more difficult to do that with a lot of weight. So I'm not afraid to drop the weight a little bit. <clears throat> Somebody over there might see you and say, yo, Kai Green, you're a pro bodybuilder. You're only using a little bit of weight. I could do that. I'm stronger than him. But the power is not what it looks like across the room, but what's actually happening inside of your body is you take command of your instrument. Does that make sense? All right, so we're pulling, we're pulling, we're pulling. Contraction here. This contraction is your lat spread, it's your rear to a bicep shot, it's your rear lat spread, it's everything. All right, let's get it. One, two, three, control, let's get it. The Train With Kai contest not only highlights exceptional amateur bodybuilders, but also seeks to bring attention to young people whose stories transcend the sport and touch us in some way. In Torin's case, there is another layer to his story. In addition to his training and competing, Torin is also studying information technology at North Carolina A&T State University, but still finds the time to help an older brother who is legally blind. His brother is Tyrone Davis II, which he's legally blind. He's been that way ever since he was like eight years old. And I taught him not to give up in life. He went to North Carolina State for eight years, got a BS, a master's, and now he's at Elon Law School. I use what is called a CCTV, so if I need to read a book, um, I can read it. It's a TV and it has a camera attached to it and it enlarges the book. And for the computer, I use a program called ZoomTex. Um, it enlarges the screen. It also has a screen reader capability. So if I need to, um, you know, read a Word document or something, I can have, have it read to me. He's been very independent because I trained him to be independent. Tyrone and Torin is seven years apart. So they never really had a chance to actually grow up together because Tyrone been off of college ever since he was 17 years old. And now they're living together and they're bonding and he, you know, helps Tyrone out, you know, take him to the grocery store, take him to the barber shop, you know, take him to school, you know, things like that. Now like something like this, if it's been in here for a while, which it has, I would ask like, Torrin, can you see if you see an expiration date on here or something? Because I know it would take me like forever to find. <laughs> I'm very proud of both my boys and they're beginning to bond and actually know what it is to love each other because they've never been around each other from being seven years apart. I train my kids with love. Without family you have nothing. And I train them to love each other. That is just him and his brother and they always got to take care of each other. With all this on his plate, plus a part-time job, you would think that Torrin Davis would have little time left for the 24-7 work that being a bodybuilder entails. But the result of Tyrone Sr.'s firm but loving upbringing is becoming increasingly apparent today as Torrin gives himself over completely to being Kai's student. Nice, six, nice, seven, eight, nine, that's nice, 10. The way you're bending over, your lower back is getting a lot of work. You can break this up a little bit, sticking your ass out and putting your chest up. So your bent over row is here, here, and not, not here. That make sense? Yeah. 
the better you are over time with developing a stronger command of these kinds of movements, it's only going to make your back just that much better. I'm going to tell you about bending your back a little, bending your knees a little bit. Your knees will help, help protect your lower back from injury. Bending your knees, let's see how she does it. See how her, her knees are bent? Believe it or not, you need to use your legs on a bent over row. By using your legs, you begin to use the natural lower back protection that's just built in to your body and the ability to do the movement correctly. Does that make any sense? In other words, you don't have to make your lower back work as hard doing a bent over, bent over barbell row as you are. You wanna, you wanna almost relax your lower back enough that allows you to take the resistance that would be transferred here and transfer it to your glutes and your hamstrings, you know, and your quads. You know, you see me set up? There's a difference between setting up with my feet too close together and my back here to do a bent over row. So everything from the waist up may be great on you, but the, everything from the waist down is an inferior setup. It's built to your disadvantage. If you turn around, plant your feet, a little wider drop and wow, I'm losing my pants. It's crazy. <laughs> Kyrie's ass, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so keep my kick my butt back. Sit down here. Almost like assuming a three-point stance of playing football. Yeah. You know, I am able to take take my lower back out of it to some degree. Mm -hmm. Even though technically, yeah, there is a contraction on my spinal erectors, but it's, it's different from this. This I can get injured like this. Mm. As you get heavier, as you, you know, you're setting yourself up for an injury. All right, now, when you do a deadlift, right? Everybody talks about deadlift, deadlift. Believe it or not, deadlifts work everything. Just like squats. Mm. When you're squatting, you have a lot of weight on that bar and you're struggling to come up, blast out of the bottom of that movement. Believe it or not, your, your back, your traps, your lats, your rhomboids, all those, those muscles contract so intensely to help support that weight as you're coming up out of that movement and even standing at the top. In order to be here, all these muscles have to contract in ways that a lot of times we're not even conscious of, you know? When we do, when you do a deadlift, we're gonna concentrate on our glutes and our hamstrings, but as a byproduct, what ends up happening is your spinal erectors. This area from here, the top of your gluteus medius, and underneath your lats and your traps, this little area right here is like where these, your strong cords are, your spinal erectors. When you do this movement, if you do this movement effectively over time, what starts to happen is your strong cords, your spinal erectors, you get a really good control of them as you diet and get ready for competition. You'll see that area fiber out in a really nice way. You know, it's in a, on really polished physiques, you know, think about physique, when I do this, I think about physiques like Sean Ray, mm -hmm. like Ronnie Coleman, yeah. like Albert Beckles, like Rich Gaspari. If you, when you get home, if you wanna take a minute and Google those physiques, look them up, look at their riddle bicep shot, look at their real lat spread, yeah. you know, you'll see that there's not just an empty space here, but along with having great development up top, all through here, you'll see a whole lot of really freaky stuff going on there. Samir Benut, the year he won the Mr. Olympia title, his, his spinal erectors looked ridiculous. He, so much so he was able to, and the body fat and subcutaneous water was so low, and the development was so intensely developed that he could put his hands on the front of his quads and contract his abs, and then all this interesting detail would walk out as his lats would cross strike, his spinal erectors would stand out really well detailed and defined. So when you do this movement, you want to think about that. Those kinds of images should be running through your mind. Make any sense? All right, and it also completes your back training. No back training is complete 
without deadlifts unless you have some issues that make deadlifts problematic. But you look like a young man and ain't got no problem. So we just need to get these done. Does that make sense? We got four sets, we're gonna knock them out. Three. Five. Six. Nine. Ten. Six. Seven. Watch how she gets her ass down. Ass down. Very, very close. Four. Five. Contraction on those glutes at the top. Six. Yes, one, two, come on, three, let's go, four, let's go, five, come on, 14, come on. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, come on, come on. Eighteen, let's go, come on. Nineteen, let's go, come on. Come on. 20. Good shit. That's for sure. One year, I went to the Team Universe. That's where I got my pro card. I won the Team Universe to turn pro. But prior to going to the Team Universe and winning, I went to the Team Universe sometimes and didn't always win. The first year I went to the Team Universe, I stood on stage with this guy named Rob, Robert Washington that blew everybody away. Took second that year. And the next year I trained harder, dieted harder, came back to the Team Universe and placed worse. I placed third behind a guy named Les Jennings and Skip LaCour. I'll never forget a lesson that I learned in bodybuilding one-on-one -on -one was standing on stage watching Skip LaCour do a most muscular facing the judges. Now you know, you're standing on stage and you're standing from semi relaxed face. But I watched it and learned a very, very valuable lesson. Skip the core was no more than four feet in front of me. And he leaned forward to the judges and he hit what was the most muscular shot. But when I stood there from the rear, I saw something I, I'd never seen before. When he hit his most muscular shot, his hamstrings were ridiculous. His glutes just, just fibered out and there's this really awesome anatomy chart looking stuff going on. His spinal erectors did this really interesting stuff. There's detail and things that, and dryness and hardness that I, I hadn't seen or I hadn't competed against yet in my experience of bodybuilding competition when being on stage. In short, I'm saying this to say that when I saw him do that shot, I learned how significant a deadlift was in your arsenal, in your training arsenal. You know, technically that's what that was. As he leaned forward and did a most muscular, what I saw from the rear was everything that you see when you're doing a deadlift. You know? So as you come up out, if you blast out of, the, out of the bottom of that position and you lock into the top position of your deadlift, technically that is your semi-relaxed pose from the rear. If somebody was watching you from the rear and you were to lock your, lock your, lock your, 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 your balls of your feet, hamstring, root, spinal erectors, traps, rear delts, and lats, that's what's going on when you're doing your deadlift. Every time you do your deadlift, you're making connections with muscles and development ultimately that will occur as a result of doing this that you probably can't even recognize how they relate to other things, other poses from other angles that we don't even see or even think about. I would, I would not have seen or would not have thought on my own prior to seeing it demonstrated through Skip LaCour that day how well related the deadlift was to Every, every pose, or particularly a, a pose like a front lat, I mean, front most muscular, you know? The final two exercises in this long workout begin to take their toll on the exhausted young athlete. Grip, energy, and focus all begin to go. This is dangerous territory for any athlete. The incentive is to please Kai and the camera. Yet in this state, injury becomes more and more likely. Torin wisely shelves his ego for the time being and opts to lower the weight, knowing that success on the Arnold stage in two weeks is much more important.
If you see, oh, damn it. <clears throat> if you look here, can you see that? Can you see that? Now that's what I want you to think about when you do this movement. Now if you notice his hands are to the side and they're almost pressing on the front, the palms are placed on the front of his body. But what's happening from the rear, all kinds of detail is walking out. That makes sense? When you do your seated pulley roll right now, you need to imagine that. You're gonna need 20 reps though. And the trick is to try to pick a weight that yeah. you feel like you could probably get only six, I mean 16 with, and push out 20. Two, you gotta squeeze now, let's go. Three, there you go, let's go. Four, there you go, come on. 14, big back. Come on, come on. 15, let's go. 16, come on, come on. 17, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. No less than 20, 18, let's go. Come on, now, now, 19, come on, now. Now, come on, 20, that's what we want. That's what we want, we want failure now. Now we're not trying to be nice to it now. We done tried to coax it. We done tried to be friendly with it. Now we just gonna beat it up. Now, we just gonna beat it up. Like caveman, just give it to me. Shut up, let's go. One, two, three, Seven, let's go. Eight, let's go. Nine, let's go. Ten, let's go. Eleven, let's go. Twelve, come on. Boom. 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 Ten, let's go. Eleven, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Come on, aggressive. Twelve. I saw a moment that he was tired but he reached down and he, he got what he needed to have. I could see that look on his face. I was kind of concerned and worried, you know, but I'd say, well, you know, I know he know what to do. He know when to lighten the weights. I told him a long time ago, I say, you know where in the world you can ever compete with Kyle Green, so don't be trying to go there and lift a whole bunch of weights. I told him that a long time ago. You go there and do what you were trained to do. You 11 days out from the armor. If he, had had, if he wasn't motivated and had the right mindset, he could come here and try to show out and hurt himself. Can't go to the arm. Can't do nothing. I can see him, you know, really struggling at that point. And then he had sense enough to lighten the weights. But when he did lighten the weights, he didn't do 20, he did 25. With the workout complete, the entire video crew starts to talk about getting something to eat. Just when Torrin thought it was all over, he gets one more lecture from Professor Kai. Wow, okay. You ain't bring your food? No, nah, I couldn't have no stove or nothing. I mean, cook in yeah, a okay. yeah, hotel. Let me tell you, my first show, I ain't know. My second show, I ain't know. Third, fourth, and fifth show, I don't know. But you better believe that my sixth, seventh, and eighth show, yeah. one of the biggest lessons I learned was proper preparation prevents poor performance. Mm. You, as an athlete that's aspiring to see your best realized yeah. and your dreams come true, you can't leave stuff to chance like that. But when you travel, you got to have your food with you. If you can't have your food, then you can't go. Yeah. It's very, very important. You're two weeks out from your show. That's one mistake that you're making that as you go forward and you become better, you're not going to be able to make food. Your food is everything. So you said to me when I asked him, hey, you know, where's your food? Well, you know, I, I, I don't have a, a means of cooking in my room. That's bad on you. Because what you could have done, you can go to a store, 99 cents, you get a hot plate for like $19, a hot plate. You take your food, you keep it in a Tupperware, put it on ice, you travel with you, go to the hotel, the morning when you get up, before you do your cardio, or, or maybe you do your cardio right away, but after that, before you leave the house, you have to go. If it takes an hour, if it takes two hours, it's up to you to cook your meals, Pack them in your Tupperware, pack them in your, your, your Ziploc bags, and then you have it with you all day, every two hours, every three hours, however you're, you're, you're breaking your thing down, without fail. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. The difference a lot of times between the athlete that's on stage, seeing their dream happen, and the person that's a spectator in the audience that's watching, a lot of times it's not knowledge. 
And a lot of times it's not the things that we think. Oh, well, he has more money. That's why I can't do it. Or, you know what, he has more genetics. That's why I can't do it. No, a lot of times the difference between the guy on stage and the guy in the audience is the application of knowledge, the application of what we know. A lot of people know how to diet, but not everyone knows how to discipline themselves to get the shit done. So going forward from this, the biggest lesson that I would like to give to you today is that proper preparation prevents poor performance. So going forward from this now, you know it is unacceptable to say to yourself, oh, well, I don't, I don't have a means to cook my food. Because you can get a hot plate. I used to live in a room. I lived in a room without a cooking, without a kitchen. You know, but I still was a bodybuilder and aspiring to see my dream happen. Yeah. So I would get up and cook my food in my room in a hot one, a hot plate. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it works. You know, turn around, I get a little better. I can get a George Ford front of mine. Somebody get people that buy these things and then don't use them. A lot of times they throw them away. I got a George Foreman grill. They gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Somebody thought that was a joke. I took that to my room. I plugged it in. I got a George Foreman grill. I can cook. You know what I was able to cook on that? My eggs on that, my chicken on that. There was no reason for me to go forward without having the things that I need. Once you make the decision to get it done, you can get it done. So going forward, today, if you're in your hotel room, there's no reason tonight why you shouldn't have the necessary means to get your food done for the next two days. I don't know how long you're gonna be here, but going forward, that is not an excuse. That is not an excuse. Yes? Okay. Good news, brother. All right. Going to school, working a job, assisting his disabled brother. None of these things can stand in the way of Torin achieving his goals. The discipline learned from karate infuses everything he does. He's been dieting for eight weeks. He's weak. He hadn't eaten, but he did not play that for an excuse. He went in there and he done what he had to do. And he just was not gonna say, I'm tired, I'm gonna give up. It's just not in his nature. In less than two weeks, Torin will step on stage at the Arnold Classic competition, where he will test himself against some of the best amateur bodybuilders in the country. But no matter what happens in Columbus, it is clear that Torin Ashton Davis has a bright future. Torin has so many, many gifts. I, at this point, really don't know what he's gonna do. But whatever he does, it will be outstanding.